So dear, oh, and Gail, uh, family members, and students, colleagues, and friends. Yeah. So thank you very much for coming tonight, uh, today. Um, I read that there are three stages in life, youth, middle age, and you look good. <laughs> <laughs> So since a couple of years ago, you know, people started telling me, oh, you look good. <laughs> <laughs> you look good for your age. So I started thinking about, you know, maybe I should become, you know, transition from being a distinguished professor to an extinguished professor. <laughs> yeah. But it is a hard decision to make because there are still people who are senior than I am, and, who, and they are still uh, very distinguished in their research. Okay. I'll tell you later, at the end, why I decided to retire. Okay. So uh, first, I want to thank Ao Cho for placing this retirement symposium higher priority than meeting President Xi Jinping of China. <laughs> so he canceled his trip to China, yeah. <clears throat> so I, I'm uh, deeply honored. I also want to thank Gail Wilson, our former California First Lady, and uh, Dan Aldrich for fighting the Los Angeles traffic to come here. So, um, and you know, so many of you, uh, to come here. Actually, at first, I thought that uh, you know having a retirement party would be just having a departmental uh, luncheon in the faculty club, and then maybe I donate you know uh, something to an undergraduate scholarship. But uh, <coughs> uh, but Trung Nguyen, my department chair. Is a very excellent department chair. He seizes this opportunity <laughs> for fundraising. <laughs> 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 so as some of you know, I'm the faculty uh, director of the faculty and staff giving. And our goal is to increase the gifts participation, you know, participation over amount. And my friend, uh, Andy Kamo uh, from chemistry, I noticed he just left, he said he has an astute observation that a faculty member will give only if a colleague dies or retires. Okay. <laughs> so I made the second ultimate sacrifice, <laughs> retiring myself. Okay. <laughs> the ultimate sacrifice is dying, <laughs> which, but I'm not ready for it. <laughs> yet. Yeah. So I, I see that uh, actually the participation rate has increased, has gone up. So thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. So I, I see uh, many students here. So I give one advice. Seize the opportunity, but also be lucky, like I am. You know. So I'm lucky to, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, to have very supportive family. Okay. And you know, when I was a student, I thought I would, uh, you know, I would mar get married until you know my thirties. You know, I want to enjoy singles life. Okay. <laughs> Hiking, camping, you know, and going to theaters. You know, in fact, I met Meryl Streep in 1975. And my opening line was, I'm a fan of yours. <laughs> and it worked <laughs> because I talked to her for two hours. Oh. You know, you know, that's right after she graduated uh, from Master of Fine Arts at Yale. But then uh, I met my wife in the library, and I knew that you know she was for me. So, 
we got married almost 42 years ago uh, in 1976. Um, then I'm also, I was also lucky to be working at Bear Labs okay, and met some tremendous people. So <coughs> I was hired to do surface analysis in the development division. But one day in the corridor, I noticed that uh, there is a discarded uh, MBE grow, uh, source flange. You know, from Aucho's labs. So I seized the opportunity. I picked it up and put it in an empty uh, vacuum chamber in my, in my lab. And I learned to do how to MBE myself and then managed to pu publish uh, a few papers. Okay. So then I was uh, transferred to Shinchen uh, Pai's department to do MBE uh, of uh, high electron mobility structures. So I was lucky to have Xin Shen as my boss, okay? Because he allowed me to spend only 80% of the time doing the bread and butter stuff, you know, growing uh, hemp structures, and allow me 20% to um, do anything I wanted. So I was able to do research and uh, publish papers. I was also lucky that uh, the MB system in the research division of Argasser was down. Was so <coughs> it's, uh, some of, you know, I guess all of my students know the MB also stands for much broken <laughs> equipment. <laughs> <laughs> when it when it's, uh, needs repair, it takes time you know, to go back to uh, air, repair, pumping down to vacuum, and then to ultra high vacuum. And so many uh, researchers in the di research division you know, came to me for high quality samples. So I was able to um, you know, get some more publications. Now the reason why I came to UCSD, UCSD you know, even though I was supported very well, was that the lab the labs decided to move my move Shinchen Pai's department along with other departments from Murray Hill, New Jersey, to Reading, Pennsylvania, to be close to uh, the manufacturing site of Bell Labs or of AT and T called Western Electric. So the labs, you know, send us send a bus to take us to Reading to do house hunting, and Reading prided itself to be the pretzel capital of the world. <laughs> so each one of us got a box of chocolate-covered pretzels. Okay. <laughs> but I saw that uh, you know, since I have to, to leave, uh, I might as well look around. So I, um, so I, I look at different places, you know, industry and uh, universities um, or here. This is uh, uh, the picture you have seen before with uh, Xin Shen. Now we, um <coughs> so it was very fortunate that uh, I was able to come to UCSD because of the networking. You know, by by that time I had known Ao Cho and attended and networked several MBE conferences and a friend of ours, uh, Professor Ken Wang of UCLA told me that uh, oh, Walter Koo just moved from Cornell to UCSD and started a uh, circuit group. So they had an opening. So, you know, so here, the saying that opportunities come to those who are prepared you know, uh, is true. Because even though I did not have to produce papers, but I was able to, you know, thanks to Xin Shen, and uh, so because of you know, those publications, I was given an opportunity to come to UC San Diego. And it is, a, you know, San Diego is an excellent play, place. And, uh, um, but at that time, you know, when I announced my departure from Bell Labs, a department head at Bell Labs told, you know, asked me, why do you want to move from a first rate industrial lab 
to a second-rate university. You know, but it, I saw that I remember I, when I was looking for graduate schools in physics, I remember physics in UCSD was placed uh, in the top 20. So I thought engineering could not be too bad. And uh, later on, okay, I found out you know, in the 80s, engineering at UCSD ranked 42. So, but in the last few years, so in the last decades, the UCSD engineering has, is now in the top 15. So I feel very vindicated and uh, <laughs> thankful. Yeah. So. Now, I, uh, you know, when I, <coughs> so as many people mentioned that, uh, you know, the, about Gasso's MBE. So, because at that time, most people working on MBE work on solid source MBE. Okay. So coming to a university, and I think uh, Professor Norman Chen mentioned, you know, we have to find something different to do. So we decided, so I decided on gas source MBE. And uh, here you see that uh, the, uh, you know, we have very toxic gas, <laughs> arsine and phosphine. Okay. But we use it very sparingly because we just, before the growth, we just, before in the beginning of the day, we just open the valve for a few seconds to charge the line, and then we close the valve. So the toxic gas is uh, closed all the time, actually, except for a few seconds. Yeah. So, um, yes, I, and here shows that now when it needs a major repair, then it's a big thing, yeah, so. Now here, I also want to mention that uh, you know, in, in 1990, one evening, I got a phone call from uh, Herb Cromer, a Nobel laureate at UC Santa Barbara. He told me that uh, Peter Asbeck was, you know, was being recruited by UCLA and Herb saw that Peter, being a gentleman, uh, was more suitable for UCSD than UCLA. You know. <laughs> because uh, our department is very collegial. You know, no empires crash, crashing each other. So I immediately um, talked to my department head, you know, Bill Chang, at that time. And quickly, we asked Peter to, uh, you know, for an interview and then uh, give him an offer. So very fortunately, he accepted our offer. And uh, our department ranking you know, improved uh, right away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So around that time, uh, Peter's old boss, uh, Derek Chung, at Rockwell International, uh, decided to donate a, a used MBE system to me. You know, here it says that you know, it's a face value, you know, three quarter million dollars, and this is uh, Derek Chung. Okay. And here is our dean of engineering at that time, Lee Rudy. So the <coughs> So that, that's great. Okay. Now, the, um, so now let me tell you, so the machine <laughs> looks like this. Okay, machine looks like this. Yeah. But now let me tell you a tale of three mice, okay. <laughs> or three California rats, because they were rather big. Okay. Because the machine was uh, placed in, uh, to make room, the machine was wrapped in plastic and placed in a uh, parking lot in Southern Oak, okay, for six months. Okay. When the machine came in front of our EBU-1, when we uh, opened the plastic sheets, three mice came out. Okay. <laughs> so they came, came out into the field. Okay. Well, that, that, it turns out that the Baikal uh, blanket in the, at the bottom of the pump you know, was a very cozy, Nice uh, rat <laughs> nest. Okay. We moved the machine into the into a lab, so it was very smelly. Okay, so we use a uh, baking powder and uh, you know to clean up the smell. But then, 
three additional mice came out. Okay. I remember very, very vividly uh, Professor Harry Weider and two people from uh, Environmental Health and Safety. You know, they used a bucket okay, chasing one rat because a rat was running along the wall. Okay. So eventually they found, you know, they caught it and gave it to uh, EHNS people. You know, I don't know what they did with, with the rat. Okay. <laughs> But there were still two mice, <laughs> two rats left. Okay. So we put the sticky, st sticky mats on the floor of the labs and the adjacent area. And sure enough, one morning, we found some rat hair on the sticky mat. So it, means that it meant that this uh, rat you know, got caught in the sticky mat, but then got away okay, because it was big. But after a couple of days, we found a rat on the sticky mat. You know, it just did not learn. <laughs> so we gave it to uh, EHNS people. Okay. And then uh, one, one day, I think one afternoon, I think it was uh, Patrick well, who called me saying that there's a smell in the lab. And uh, so, you know, asked me to come down. So we went down and uh, we you know, look at uh, the electronics rack, and we saw kind of one wire dangling, okay? It turned out that it's not a broken wire, but it's a tail of the third rat, okay? The rat somehow got into the nooks and crannies of uh, electronics rack, slipped, and got pinned on the post of a power control unit, okay? So MBE also stands for mice, be aware, electrocution. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> MBE, MBE, so you can see MBE is a, uh, is a mouse trap, I expensive mouse trap, <laughs> but it works, okay? So we, uh, um, so Nelson and uh, others, you know, so we, again, outfitted this machine with uh, toxic gases, but not as bad as arsenic and phosphine. But you can see all the gas lines, okay. And so because uh, we were able to produce materials not possible by commercial equipment, so we were able to produce a lot of new materials and publish papers, okay? And so when visitors to my group, you know, they thought I had a big operation because of our output, but actually my group is uh, relatively small, okay? So here I just show some pictures of the uh, uh, group members, okay? A couple of them are not in my group, but anyway, so. And, you know, so say Bing and Hong and Vincent, you know, graduated. And then I think you saw this picture before. So we added a uh, few members, new members. You know, there is uh, Willie, Willie Wang, you know, Jerry May. Uh, and here, um, Chris Yan. Okay. And Dave Tomich here and uh, Nelson Lee. Okay. So here's some more, you know, another, another picture. Yeah. So we have a uh, mascot here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I also uh, attended uh, departmental affairs. So uh, here, this is uh, back in uh, 1996. So we have uh, uh, Brigitte here. Okay. And in 1997, I received the, uh, a Faculty of the Year Award Okay, from the staff. So it's shown here. Okay. So faculty of the year. And I thought that, okay, you know, of course I'm honored to be the first re recipient. And then I thought, okay, there will be you know, other faculty of the years uh, in, su in later years. But no, this is the only one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is the most precious among all my awards, okay, <laughs> the only one, yeah. And this is a, 
um, the home page of our department around that time, you know, in the 96 or 97. And uh, <clears throat> so, you know, there is a drawing, and that must be me. <laughs> because uh, I always uh, ride my bicycle to class, you know, and at that time, also carrying a projector. So in the, in the 90s, you know, then I, you know, as I said, I met, uh, you know, some tremendous people. So here we have uh, Ao Cho and uh, Professor Norman Cheng, yeah. And we have uh, Irina showed this picture before. So this, uh, when Irina and uh, Wei Min visiting UCSC in 1998. And then this uh, Professor Yong An Zhang visiting in 1999. And here, this is uh, Yuhua Lo uh, with uh, Ramesh Rao and uh, at U. So we invited uh, Federico Capasso, you know, a giant in the semiconductor field. Yeah. So now uh, I want to say a few things about, uh, you know, so in 1999, then I was uh, selected to be the department chair. So here I show uh, hang glide, uh, paragliding, uh, and this is tandem. Oops, this is a uh, tandem gliding, and it's me, you know, in the front. So I should say that uh, the department saved my life, okay? Because uh, it was in the late nineties, and I was in late forties. Going to my daughter Jenny, you know, I was having a midlife crisis. Okay. <laughs> I saw paragliders, you know, from the glider port, and I thought, okay, I, I wanted to learn. Okay, so I signed up, pay tuition to uh, learn paragliding. Okay, but then one month after I started, my instructor died <laughs> of a paragliding accident. You know, I was shocked because he was from uh, Israeli Israeli army. He has served 3,000 hours of flight time. I have less than 30 minutes. <laughs> 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 but I already paid tuition. <laughs> <laughs> so I continue with another instructor. <laughs> but then I lost confidence. You know. So I crash landed twice and it, in one month. And each time I had to go to emergency room. Fortunately, no bones were broken. Okay. So after my first crash, uh, Dean Bob Kang asked me if I wanted to be the department chair. And I said, I'll give you an answer in a week. Okay. A week later, I went to his office with a crutch. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, OK, I accepted the job, and I promised to be safe, and I will give up paragliding or learning paragliding <laughs> for the sake of my family and the department. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, so at that time, the enrollment increased quite a bit because the s children of the baby boom generation started entering college. And so you see here, uh, this is a slide that I made for a faculty retreat in 2002. So here, undergraduate enrollment you know, increased to 1,200 students. Graduate enrollment was to about 450, and mostly PhD students. So little did I know that uh, you know, with the dot-com bubble in 2000, actually the enrollment dropped from 1,200 to less than 600. But then it has increased again. So now it's also about 1,200 you know, undergraduates. So, I, uh, <clears throat> so here, you know, it's just a slide in this retreat. You know, so I, you know, in that year, 2001 to 2002, you know, we had these professors uh, joining the department. And they are still here, you know, so that's great. We mentioned about ABET and try to uh, increase the number of uh, summer school offerings to 
relieve the pressure of student enrollment. And here, you know, Eureka, you know, I'll mention it later. But also in 2002, I organized a UCSC Nobel Laureate Symposium on semiconductor heterostructures. You know. So here is me, a department chair, giving awards to three Nobel laureates. <laughs> <laughs> so the way it came about was because uh, uh, Dan Tsui, uh, whom I knew from Bell Labs, and so he was awarded Nobel Prize in physics in 1998, and this is uh, 2002. You know, so I said I was very lucky to be in San Diego because he chose to come to my group for sabbatical for two months. Okay. And also, at that time, uh, Zoris Alferov, director of the Yofe Institute in St. Petersburg, Russia, uh, was awarded the um, the um, which prize the um, all of a sudden I I lost my life. was also the uh, the Kyoto Prize yeah and uh, and so he oops he came to uh, so it's a condition you know so he came here to came to San Diego and so the I saw oh we have two Nobel Prize uh, winners in you know in this uh, period so i asked herb cromer from uc santa barbara to come you know and then so we had a, uh, a nobel laureate <coughs> symposium and so here we had uh, uh, dinner with uh, nobel laureates and uh, their wives okay i show this picture because uh, uh, here's dean khan and uh, ramesh rao but unfortunately he has to leave you know. So that was a uh, uh, Nobel laureate symposium. But now Eureka, because I had a Eureka moment one evening that Eureka can stand for ECE's undergraduate research conference and assembly. Okay. So I thought, oh, this is a great acronym. So I got to <laughs> have this event. Okay. So we had uh, Eureka and uh, here, you know, so the students will give a very short oral summaries, and then uh, I have a post uh, session. And here's Professor uh, Pankaj Das, you know, also helping me out. And OK, so I also uh, mentioned that you know, I try to have uh, annual you know, department uh, picnic, uh, free lunch for the faculty, okay. and every month for the staff. And formed the uh, EC uh, Industrial Advisory Board. And we had uh, Erwin Jacobs as one of the members. And then I had ACE. Okay. So that stands for Alumni Club of ECE. And so here, um, I want to show the ACE. So every year, then they invited uh, alumni entrepreneurs and also faculty entrepreneurs uh, to the faculty club and uh, you know give talks and mingle with students. And so here is Paul Murray and Sadiq Esna, Ra uh, Ramesh Jain, and uh, Marco Thompson. And um, here is a picture of uh, Miri Oskan when she was a student. I don't know whether she's, I know she's, she came to this symposium. Yeah. And then, uh, Hussein uh, Eslambauchi. So he was uh, a CTO of, uh, I think, AT&T Bell Labs. Yeah. And so we united him with uh, his advisor, you know, Dick Anderson. So it was called uh, Breakfast with the Ace of Ace. Yeah. And here's another, another year. Uh, so we have Rick Confield and, again, uh, Ramesh Rao. So. And this is a departmental picnic. So we have Paul Yu and Peter Asbeck here, Yen Tao, uh, Suji Day. And then, uh, you know, picture with the staff. So here again, Brigitte. Yeah. And then uh, in the <laughs> Christmas party, my secretary you know, suggested, oh, we should have a sunny and share show. 
you know, so I, I was uh, sunny. I was glad to do it, you know, because I could have more <laughs> hair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Sylvia was a very good chef. Yeah. So my goal was to uh, you know, solidify the ECE community spirits, you know, the faculty, students, staff, and uh, alumni. You know. And when I became associate dean, um, the Eureka, now be, that E, now stands for engineering. So we expanded to different engineering departments. Yeah. So here we have, uh, you know, Jim Ferrante, uh, Bob Sa also attending the uh, uh, Eureka event. And we have Jeff Wurzbach and uh, his parents. Yeah. So in, uh, and um, uh, Vladimir mentioned that uh, you know, we form a company called Quan Light, but so it really it's all up to Vladimir because he he um, you know had this uh, poster, a research poster in our research expo, and at that time, so there's some you know venture capitalists you know, came to our research expo and to see try to get some new ideas, and uh, at that time. So Vladimir already took some entrepreneurial classes. And so he already had a, a business plan you know, for his class okay, ready. So when the uh, venture capitalists asked him, well, sounds good. You know, give me a business plan later, immediately that evening. You know, <laughs> Vladimir okay, could send him a <laughs> business plan. And uh, uh, so Quan uh, Lai was born. Yeah. So but unfortunately, you know, it met the uh, you know, year 2008, you know, financial crisis. So you know, the company wanted to raise $70 million, but I think maybe raised only about half. So the CEO decided to uh, close the uh, company. But I'm glad to see that Vladimir also continued to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. And here are just some uh, pictures uh, during this time. You know, I, I don't have uh, as many students, but I have visitors and uh, also postdocs. So, you know, so I have yeah, Qin Zhen Pan from Taiwan and uh, Su Gang from Korea, Alicia from Russia, and uh, Suari from Thailand, and uh, also Zhang Fuxiang from uh, Taiwan. Yeah. And um, so here's uh, kind of my last batch, last generation of students. Uh, so we have, you know, when uh, Wen Bi, the first generation, is, was visiting. Okay, so we have these uh, students. So now, you know, in the, as an associate dean, so it was actually very uh, fortunate for me, too, you know, because I could open my eyes you know, and uh, look at different fields. And uh, Jim Ferrante mentioned uh, about uh, ties, teams in engineering service. So it was really Jean's uh, idea, you know, the driving force for, for it. And she just asked me to be a co, co PI. So but she was a PI. And then under the leadership of uh, uh, Mandy Bratton and the Bob, uh, later, you know, it became Global Ties. And so global ties, you know, also, you know, so we work for communities. And here's just some, uh, this is uh, Robert Wolf uh, here you know, working. So we have a team working on solar panel installations for um, ground work, San Diego, yeah. And here I must mention about the uh, IEEE, okay. Because uh, in the year, uh, 2003, the activity was not very, uh, not that many. And uh, the IEEE was in debt, about $20,000, for hosting some event you know, in downtown uh, hotel. And, uh, <coughs> and then uh, there was only one micro mouse. And it was not even built by EC student. It was built by a physics student. Okay. And then uh, the uh, faculty counselor that I assigned did not attend uh, any meetings because he had a young family. So of course he uh, you know, went home. 
So when in the year 2003, when I stepped down as a chair of the department, you know, I was an empty nester. So I thought, OK, I'll volunteer to be the faculty counselor. And so through different generations of leaders, the uh, IEEE uh, student branch uh, really has grown to be very robust. So we have um, uh, Minji, Kim here, and uh, also Jeff, Alex. And, and so now, you know, every year they have uh, over 40 number of events and you know, impact to you know, over a thousand students. So here, you know, so here's uh, Michael Mouse. Okay, so Jeff built this uh, maze here with his parents. Yeah. And then now we also have a lot of, uh, this is a Grand Prix. And now finally about uh, Cosmos, you know, as we knew Cosmos um, is a four week residential program for high school students and, you know, about two, more than 200 at UCSD uh, in July. And uh, so here's uh, Becky Hames. And, <clears throat> and, you know, you also saw a picture of me <laughs> being Pi. So notice, you know, I wear a uh, Pi t-shirt, yeah. And this is my uh, instruction team. You know, we also teach. Uh, so I'm not, on, not only the director, but I also teach a cluster on light, light at work. Yeah. And this is uh, you know, some Cosmos events. And we have uh, Gail here with uh, students, Becky, uh, Shirley, and uh, also Dan Aldrich with uh, students. And of course, you know, the reward is uh, satisfaction from teaching these students and especially when they you know last year one student drew this uh, picture for me yeah so uh, great yeah. so again you know the cosmos and the itpoi we also <coughs> uh, do a lot of outreach and here i want to uh, especially recognize jim Rowe from spay war because he retired uh, maybe last year or two years ago, and but he recently passed away. But he's very dedicated to uh, uh, expanding STEM into middle school and high school. Oh yes, I'm also uh, I was o I'm also the uh, faculty advisor for our undergraduate scuba club. Yeah, <laughs> but here it depends on you know the success of a club really depends on the leadership. So this was in 2013, and we had a very active uh, president, and so we did outreach events and so on. But in the last three years, you know, it's kind of uh, died out. Yeah, so not not much activities. Yeah, and uh, and then in 2013, you know, I stepped down as uh, associate dean because we had a new dean and. And also, uh, Mindy, uh, no, Lindy uh, Nakata uh, arranged a party for me. And so here is uh, you know, all the nice words about it. So I, actually, I must say, at this point, I must say that uh, at first, you know, I wasn't too keen on having a planning a retirement symposium like this. Because it's like planning my own memorial service. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, uh, I think it's nice. It's, you know, because I get to hear all the nice words, kind words said about me. You know. And then you know, many people, you know, I, I know people coming from you know, Germany, Taiwan, China, and uh, uh, you know, Canada, and East Coast and so on. So it's a uh, very, you know, so it's here is a give me an opportunity to thank everyone. Yeah. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a very good thing to have. So I advise my colleagues not to wait too long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was, uh, you know, mentioned uh, about uh, Dragon Ball race because uh, my wife, you know, organized the San Diego Dragon Ball Festival every year and this year is the 14th year and uh, she also planned to retire 
And so actually May 5th was uh, Linda Two Day in the San Diego County. So, and uh, I, um, you know, of course, I try to organize uh, teams. I mean, try to recruit teams. And uh, I, you know, so here's uh, the last, the team this year. Okay, so it's called Four Cs. Yeah, started by Yang Jing now. Um, I also attended, you know, we attend the alumni events. So again, so here, you know, we have Professor Shari Deya, alumna, alumnus, and uh, Hong Ho, yeah. And then uh, I uh, also uh, helped to establish a, an endowment on Taiwan studies uh, in 2006. And part of the program is that we sponsor Taiwan Film Showcase uh, every November as part of the San Diego Asian Film Festival. And these uh, Taiwanese films are free to you know, UCSD students, faculty, and staff, you know, but the others have to pay. So now, um, you know, many people ask me why I retire, you know, because uh, there is no retirement age in American universities. Well, uh, three years ago, I um, became the uh, president of a foundation, a charitable foundation established by my grandfather more than 50 years ago in Taiwan. And he, um, you know, Taiwan was under Japanese rule for 50 years. And uh, in the 1920s, uh, uh, 1928, 29, around that time, the Japanese colonial government you know, had a, um, you know, was strict in, you know, sort of not allowing Japanese to take out opium, but allow Taiwanese to take out opium okay, because of profit, you know, as you can see, you know, like similar to uh, Britain and uh, China. And so uh, there were, but uh, in 1929, uh, some Taiwanese went to League of Nations to uh, complain. So the League of Nations sent an observer you know, or inspector to Taiwan. And uh, so the Japanese government then uh, asked my grandfather to be in charge of uh, a rehabilitation center. And so here is, uh, <coughs> you know, th this is uh, my grandfather here. Here is a uh, patient. So he developed a urinal test to see whether, um, ty uh, uh, whether the patient has taken opium or not. Okay. So uh, in year two, you know, twin, I mean 1930, so supposedly he, uh, about 14,000 addicts were cured. Yeah. So carrying on this uh, sort of legacy, then the board decided to get into uh, drug addiction. Yeah. So it is a problem in the, in the United States, but it's also a problem in uh, Taiwan, apparently. So here, you know, just uh, this year, you know, a couple of weeks ago, so in Taiwan, we had the first uh, Dr. Tom in two forum on drug addiction, medical science. So this is kind of the area <laughs> that I'm getting into now. Yeah. And uh, so now, what do I do after the retirement? Again, you know, many people ask me. Of course, the first thing is to you know spend more time with my family here. You know. And uh, then, of course, the you know work on you know with uh, this uh, foundation. And, uh, but, you know, I'll, I'm on recall. I'll be director of Cosmos at UCSD for another two years. So, you know, so here's Cosmos, and you are going to see me uh, <laughs> riding my bicycle in my uh, signature uh, yellow uh, windbreak on campus, okay. And uh, then a very important goal for me is uh, I want to, Recently, I just passed 1,300 dives. So I wanted to achieve 1,500 before age 70. So it means that, uh, you know, like 80 dives a year, yeah. So, so thank you again uh, very much for coming to this uh, retirement symposium. It's a once in a lifetime experience. So, and I'm very glad to see so many people here. Thank you.